Hello, I'm Emily Knowlton, an Immunology Sales Specialist at ProImmune, and in this presentation I'll introduce you to our ProMap Naive T-cell proliferation assay for measuring naive T-cell proliferative responses to peptide antigens. Immunogenicity, or unwanted immune responses, can be a significant obstacle in the development of biological drugs. There are multiple factors that contribute to immunogenicity, and these can be described as either extrinsic or intrinsic factors. Extrinsic factors include things like the route of administration in which the drug is given, or the frequency of exposure to that drug, as well as the immune status of the patient receiving it, while intrinsic factors represent the biologic itself, so the amino acid sequence of the biologic, the formulation in which it's given, or whether or not the biologic will aggregate. A new biologic will contain novel protein content, or these intrinsic factors, that can lead to T-cell activation. The following cartoon illustrates the activation of a T-cell-dependent pathway, ultimately leading to an unwanted immune response against the biologic. In this cartoon, the drug is first taken up and processed by a professional antigen-presenting cell, such as a DC. Those DCs will present peptide epitopes within the context of an MHC class II molecule to help our CD4 T cells. This interaction is key in driving the remainder of the response as the activated T cells can provide help to the B cells. Activated B cells can then secrete anti-drug antibodies, which can result in a loss of efficacy, altered PK and PD, and even cross-reactivity. Identifying these intrinsic factors, such as CD4 T-cell epitopes, and managing immunogenicity risk in the early drug development stages is a critical process, and success in this area can have a significant impact on the program's value. ProImmune offers an integrated, best-in-class assay platform that allows you to evaluate the potential for immunogenicity risk specific to your program needs. For example, to map functional T-cell responses or confirm peptide epitopes, the ProMap Naive T-cell proliferation assay can be used. The T-cell proliferation assay helps to identify the presence or absence of potential T-cell epitopes within proteins. The assay is designed to distinguish CD4 proliferative responses between different but similar peptides and assist in the identification of epitope sequences that can elicit helper T-cell proliferation. In this assay, the CD4 T-cell responses to individual peptides are measured using flow cytometry. We would typically suggest a panel of 20 to 50 donors that we select from our ProImmune donor cohort. These donors are sourced from the UK NHS Blood and Transplant Service, and the PBMCs are isolated and then cryopreserved. All donors are fully typed for class 2, and then selected for each assay to best represent the tissue type distribution and the general population. And of course, if there are specific distributions requested, we can try to accommodate those as well. The donor PBMCs are labeled with CFSE. CFSE is an intracellular staining dye that is equally distributed into daughter cells each time the cell divides. The CFSE labeled PBMCs are co-cultured with peptides over a seven day period. The test peptides used in this assay can be a set of individual sequences that have been determined as potential epitopes through other assays, such as our mass spectrometry-based antigen presentation assay. Or alternatively, we can generate an overlapping peptide library from a region of your protein of interest. As a standard approach, we would generate greater than 95% pure 15 mers offset by three amino acids. Each peptide is co-cultured in six replicates with the CFSC-labeled PBMCs. In addition to the test peptides, there are five controls run in the naive T-cell proliferation assay, including a media-only control, whole protein controls KLH and PPD, and synthetic peptide controls influenza HA and tetanus toxin. After the seven-day co-culture, CFSC levels are measured on CD4-positive T-cells by flow cytometry. An added advantage with this method is that if required, T-cell populations can be further characterized by incorporating additional phenotypic markers, which isn't possible with other proliferation assays, such as tritiated thymidine incorporation. Furthermore, the assay measures all proliferating T-cells over the seven-day period, including those that may respond at early and later time points during that window. Thymidine incorporation assays are limited in this regards, as they are only capable of measuring responses at a single time point. In these representative dot plots, 
Box C represents the proliferating CD4 positive CFSE low T cells and response to the test peptide, which is compared with box A in the unstimulated control. The turnaround time for the naive T cell proliferation assay is about nine weeks in total, including six weeks for synthesis of high purity peptides and three weeks for the T cell assay. At the conclusion of the study, we will upload the report to our secure server and host a debrief to go over the data and answer any questions. An example of naive T cell proliferation assay data is shown here and is taken from a case study that Proimmune performed on the Humira variable heavy chain sequence. We created an overlapping library of 15 MERS from the variable heavy chain, and these peptides are shown on the X axis. On the Y axis is the percent antigenicity, or the number of responding donors out of the total number tested. Each of the different bar colors represent a different donor. In this 40 donor study, the majority of the responses came against the CDR3 region of the heavy chain, with the highest response coming against test peptide 107, which was seven donors. But by combining these data with the data generated from our ProPresent antigen presentation assay, we identified peptide 102 as being naturally processed and presented and confirmed its functional relevance using the PROMAP naive T-cell proliferation assay. Another way in which the T-cell assay has been used is demonstrated in this example from the UK Ministry of Defense. They had developed an antibody for passive immunization and had gone through a humanization redesign process on the chimeric version of the antibody, and those sequences were provided to ProImmune. We synthesized the peptides and carried out the PROMAP assay, then determined the CD4 T cell responses to the peptides. The PROMAP T cell proliferation assay showed that while the control responses remain unchanged, the T cell antigenicity had been eliminated from the humanized peptides and that their humanization process was successful. In summary, Identifying and characterizing the CD4 T cell epitopes among your biologic candidates can help answer key immunogenicity risk questions and aid in the decision-making process. Utilizing immunogenicity assessment assays, such as the PROMAP naive T cell proliferation assay, can help to generate data to differentiate your biologic from the competitors and win in the drug markets of the future. Proimmune's experience and wide range of specialist assays in an integrated platform allows you to address your specific program needs, saving you time, money, and reducing the overall program risk. To conclude, the PROMAP T-cell proliferation assay is a great and fast tool to identify and confirm functional CD4 T-cell epitopes, a key factor in driving unwanted immune responses. If you have any questions or wish to receive a sample report or customized proposal, please contact us at inquiries at proimmune.com or by the phone numbers listed here. Thank you for your attention, and we look forward to being able to help you.